everyone, how you all doing? Welcome to the channel and I am here for a top five list video for you guys. Now for this list, I'm going to be going over some bands that I personally think went downhill in terms of sound and all that. So let's go ahead and get started with this list now. Keep in mind, I do think that it is usually a band's older material that is usually better than their newer material anyway. So there are probably countless bands you could put on this list. But I'm talking about, you know, bands that have gone downhill in terms of maybe due to the fact that maybe the band's recent material has been underwhelming or has just, you know, changed for the worse or something or changed their sound for the worse, you know. So let's go ahead and begin with this list and I think we'll start off with Alice in Chains. Now, the recent Alice in Chains material, I can't sit here and say are necessarily bad, but they are pretty underwhelming compared to the Lane Staley era of Alice in Chains. I mean, I think everyone, if you're an Alice in Chains fan, I'm sure that you agree that the Lane Staley era is way better than the era with William, which are um, Black Gives Way to Blue, The Devil Put Dinosaurs Here, and Rainier Fog. Now, I do think that William's era is decent, but not nearly as good as the Lane Staley era. Now, I personally wouldn't blame someone if they wanted to only stick with Lane Staley's era of Alice in Chains, to be honest. Like, if they say they're only going to stick with Lane's era and not William's era, I personally wouldn't stop them. I mean, I can't say that William's era is anything that's really anything noteworthy, if you know what I mean. Now, sure, I do think Black Gives Way to Blue and Rainier Fog are pretty good albums. I mean, they're decent at best at least but I do think the devil put dinosaurs here is easily their weakest but I mean that's all there is to that uh, there's no other way around it the earlier Alice in Chains albums are definitely better than the more recent ones for sure I mean if you're an Alice in Chains fan how can you not agree on that so the next band up we got Three Days Grace now I think this one's pretty much a no-brainer I think anyone can agree that Three Days Grace has definitely gotten worse over time, uh, especially with the Matt Walst era. Now, what do I think of Matt Walst as a vocalist? I think he's okay. I think what he does, he does fine, but this era is pretty underwhelming, to be honest. And like with Alice in Chains, uh, the reason that Three Days Grace has to be on this list is mainly just due to the fact that the recent material has just been pretty underwhelming and, you know, nothing really to write home about, I guess, you know? Um, I mean, I think anyone can agree that Adam's era is definitely uh, better than Matt's era, especially those first three albums. I mean, as far as Three Days Grace is concerned, you cannot top those first three albums. Those are easily their best. But again, I can't sit here and say that Matt Walsh's era are, is just garbage, but... It's definitely not anything special, nothing to write home about, whatever you want to say about it. So, yeah, I do think that Three Days Grace definitely needs to work on the lyrical content as well. The lyrics in general with Matt Walsh's era has been pretty underwhelming to say the least. But, yeah, Three Days Grace, they definitely had to be on the list. Alright, so next band up we got Linkin Park. Now, this one I think is pretty much a no-brainer as well. Linkin Park has definitely gone downhill. Uh, mainly referring to their album One More Light, which was of course the last album with Chester Bennington, May He Rest in Peace. And, you know, I can't say that, uh, like, everything after Minutes to Midnight has been trash. Um, you know, I can't really say that now. If someone wanted to only listen to the first three Linkin Park albums, I personally would be okay with that. I. I mean, I can't say that, you know, you would be missing out on too much after Minutes of Midnight, even though I thought The Hunting Party did have some good stuff on it. Uh, but when I'm talking about uh, Linkin Park getting worse over time, I'm mainly referring to, of course, One More Light. This is when they started to become more pop, and yeah, definitely not a fan of this album whatsoever. Um... Their early stuff is definitely uh, better than their new stuff either way. I mean, I think if you're a Linkin Park fan, you should at least have those uh, first two albums at least somewhere in your top three. Uh, personally, I think their first three albums are their best, to be honest. I'm actually looking forward to that um, 
Hybrid Theory Anniversary Edition. Um, I'll probably end up picking up that, uh, that edition sometime. So, yeah, Linkin Park, their recent material, mainly talking about One More Light, not that good. They definitely changed for the worst. Uh, so, yeah. Now, the next band up, some people actually might disagree with this one, but next up we got Demon Hunter. Some of you might either disagree with this or maybe a little bit shocked that I have Demon Hunter on this list uh, because a lot of you know that I do have a little bit of bias when it comes to Demon Hunter because they were my first metal band, technically. But I can't deny that the recent Demon Hunter material has not been very great. That might not go over well with some fans when I say that, but, you know, because I know there's a lot of people that say, oh, Demon Hunter's never released a bad album, blah, 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 you know. And sure, that might be true to an extent. I just think that the recent Demon Hunter albums have been very underwhelming. I feel like everything post-extremist has really been underwhelming and have not aged well at all. I do feel like Outlive, War and Peace, are some of Demon Hunter's weakest material. I know some people might disagree with that. I've heard some people say that the album War is in their top five, which is pretty astounding if you'd ask me, because I personally think Demon Hunter has done way, way better than that album. I mean, I think that um, that album in particular has really dropped off for me. Now, as far as Outlive is concerned, um, I remember being very excited for it whenever that was coming out and all that, and I remember listening to it a lot, and it's an album that has dropped off for me. The album doesn't have the strongest replay value these days, and I think a lot of us, including myself, were not willing to admit that Outlive was not one of Demon Hunter's best albums, because I remember when it came out, I was thinking, oh wow, this has got to be like top five for Demon Hunter, but no, <laughs> that's, that's kind of pushing it. But, yeah, uh, Outlive as an album has really dropped off. Uh, same with War and Peace, to be honest. Now, War and Peace, to be honest, has, have really, I think, have actually aged worse than Outlive, to be honest. Um, you know, I, I feel like these albums have, like, really dropped off faster. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's just, you know, I'm not, you know, a big fan of this band like I used to. Maybe that's why they've dropped off faster for me or whatever. I don't know what the deal is, but... My problem with the album War in particular is the fact that the album is just kind of mediocre, just kind of mediocre metalcore, if you know what I mean. Now, that might not go over well with some fans when I say that, but just hear me out, okay? Because I know that everyone was really excited, including myself, that Demon Hunter was coming out with a heavier album because I think Demon Hunter heard us. I think they heard... The complaints that Outlive was not heavy enough, you know, and then they came out with War and Peace, of course, which Peace is a more melodic album for them, but they also came out with War, um, and I think a lot of us were very excited for it, you know, a lot of us were pretty hyped, like we thought that Demon Hunter was going back to their roots, so to speak, you know what I'm saying, so I do think that uh, that really was something that got us hyped and including myself, and I remember at the time when War and Peace came out, I really liked War, and I can't deny that nowadays it doesn't do much for me. Again, it just sounds like generic metalcore, kind of just mediocre, and my attitude with the album War these days is if I wanted to listen to this style of metal, or if I wanted to listen to a Demon Hunter album like War... I will just go listen to True Defiance, or Extremist, or The Triptych, or Summer of Darkness, or something. You know, I would very much rather listen to those albums than War, to be honest. Um, I think those albums are a lot better than War. Uh, because it's, the thing is, guys, it's not, it's not like Demon Hunter hasn't made albums like this before, you know? I get that, yes, it might be a return to, uh, a return to form to an extent, but it's really no different, not much different than Outlive as far as sound is concerned, and maybe vocally. I'm mainly talking about the vocals. But yeah, um, War these days doesn't, does just doesn't do much for me, to be honest. Uh, just kind of standard metalcore. Now, Peace, 
I remember when War and Peace first came out, I remember saying that I liked War more than Peace, but nowadays, I probably like Peace more, to be honest. Now, I know that might be a rather unpopular opinion, but I think the reason I like Peace more nowadays is because it's unique and different. And that's what I really like about, you know, some bands that I've been a fan of for a long time. Like, when, when, I, when I've been a fan of a band for a long time, I eventually do want them to try something different. And that's what Demon Hunter did with Peace. And even though it's not one of their best albums, I can appreciate the innovation. Uh, it does have songs like Loneliness and Recuse Myself, which I think are some of their best uh, ballads, to be honest. I think those are uh, some of the best ballads that they've done in a while. Peace uh, also has some of their worst songs, though, like I Don't Believe You, Two Ways, and Bet My Life. I just cannot stand these songs. Like The majority of Peace... I can live without, but it does have a few good songs. But yeah, um, I do think that the album Peace is actually the best thing that Demon Hunter has done since Extremist. But that's not saying much because Peace is still not one of their best albums, not even close. So as you can see, uh, the more recent Demon Hunter albums have not been doing it for me. Uh, everything post Extremist, in my opinion, has been pretty underwhelming. Um, so. Yeah, I mean, I just think that um, the the stuff that came before Outlive is just more interesting and more satisfying to listen to, I guess. So, yeah, Demon Hunter had to be on this list. I know I kind of rambled on about this one for a while, but it's definitely something that I feel like I had to point out, especially with how bad War and Peace aged. So, the last band on this list is In Flames. Now, uh, In Flames... No-brainer, definitely. Um, their early work is definitely a lot better. I mean, worlds, worlds better than their more recent material. I mean, with especially with albums like Siren Charms, Battles, and I the Mask, these albums have not aged well, and uh, especially Siren Charms and Battles being their weakest material, I think. Um, you know, In Flames was once... Uh, a melodic death metal band and then they switched over to alternative metal which does not work for them you know my attitude with uh the more recent in flames albums is if i wanted to listen to this style of music i would just go listen to red or breaking benjamin or something you know nobody listens to in flames for the for the newer stuff if you know what i mean now when i was getting into in flames i did start out with some of their more modern material, I will admit. I started out with uh, Sounds of a Playground Fading, so I do have kind of a soft spot for that album, even though I don't think it's one of their best. I mean, their best albums to me would be The Jester Race, Colony, uh, Lunar Strain, and some others, mainly their 90s material, but yeah. The thing is that I also can't stand about In Flames' newer material is it's so mediocre and generic. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, there's just nothing special, nothing redeeming about In Flames' uh, more recent albums. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's just nothing special about it. Again, if you wanted to listen to this style of music, go listen to Breaking Benjamin or something. You don't need to listen to In Flames, you know? So, yeah, In Flames, if you want to listen to In Flames, I would just say stick with the Mellow Death stuff. But, yeah, In Flames, this is a no-brainer. I mean, Andrus Frieden is... I mean, he really dragged the band down, for sure, but, yeah, um, In Flames, they definitely had to be on the list. They're one of the first bands that immediately come to mind when I think of bands that gone downhill, for sure. Well, there you have it, guys. That is a list of five bands that have gone downhill, in my opinion, so let me know what you guys think. What are some other bands that you can personally think of that have gone downhill in terms of sound or whatever, so let me know your thoughts. Thanks for watching, have a nice day, and take care.